In this video, I'd like to address one of these objections that I often hear from people toward theistic or Christian ethics or a divine command theory of ethics specifically. So divine command theories of ethics are theories that identify moral obligations with divine commands. Uh, either they're identical with them or they're, they're based on or derived from them. So in other words, what I morally am obliged to do is based upon what God has commanded me to do. Uh, and, and not all Christians hold to that kind of ethic, but many do, in, or in terms of, a, it's not an ethic, but a meta-ethical basis for ethical reasoning. So then the, often the objection comes, uh, and it, it's really a talking point. It's, it's the question, rhetorical question, well, would you sacrifice your child if God told you to? Um, now, what I want to do in, in offering a response to that is, first of all, I'll address, of course, the underlying background of this question, in one sense, is the Akeda, is uh, uh, Genesis 22, where Abraham is commanded to offer Isaac. And I'll just say that there are many different readings of that biblical passage. For example, Jewish scholar Yoram Hazoni and other scholars like him believe that if you read the text carefully, in fact, Abraham never believed that uh, he was actually, that God actually wanted him to sacrifice his son. He didn't know what God do, was doing, uh, but he didn't actually believe that. So uh, that's just a brief note that uh, scholars do disagree on how to uh, interpret, let alone apply uh, that passage. So I'm going to set that discussion aside. And I am going to say this, that um, in my view, God, so I'll, I'll do two things. I'm going to, first of all, give my response and then uh, explain how uh, through, by way of what is often called to Kokwe, to give a response to, in fact, show that the skeptic who raises this issue is, in fact, facing the same dilemma insofar as there is any dilemma at all. And in fact, I think there isn't. So my initial response is to say, I don't believe that God would command anything morally heinous because God is a morally perfect being by definition. And uh, I think sacrificing one's child, disemboweling, you know, dra draining of the blood of one's child, killing their child in a devotional act in any circumstance would be a morally heinous action, one that fundamentally undermines the commitments and obligations of a parent to their child, to be a nurturer of that child. Uh, and one who cares for that child, to sacrifice that child, would be no less heinous than raping their child. And I hope that we can all agree, just in terms of basic uh, intuitive moral reflection, that raping your child as a devotional act could never be morally permissible, let alone praiseworthy. And uh, I would say the same thing for sacrificing, for killing your child uh, in a devotional act, raping or murdering or killing them, it could not be morally permissible, let alone praiseworthy, so God would not command such an action. Okay, now, then the atheist or skeptic, uh, <clears throat> of course, they might ask, well, how do you interpret Genesis 22? And we could have a conversation about that, and I might be inclined to, to take a reading like your Mazzoni's reading. But they could also then come back and say, okay, but what about, uh, what, what if God did command you or ask you, tell you to sacrifice your child? then would you? Aha. And this is where the Tukokwe comes in. This is where I say, um, that is in fact what we would call a per impossibile. So in, against what you believe to be necessarily the case, you're saying, yeah, but what if that wasn't necessarily the case? Uh, what if you're wrong about believing that is necessarily the case, in other words? And I would simply say, you can apply that kind of question to any ethical system at all. So for example, let's say that you are a utilitarian and you believe that uh, as, as a result that the morally praiseworthy or obligatory action is always that which produces the greatest good for the greatest number. And you could say now, but I am somewhat of a rule utilitarian in that I believe sacrificing your child in a devotional act could never be the, provide the greatest good for the greatest number. And I could say fair enough, but what if it could or what if it did? and you came to believe that, would you sacrifice your child as a good utilitarian? Okay, so that's the question. Now you can do the same thing, let's say, if you're a Kantian deontologist, and you believe as a Kantian deontologist that you always ought to act so that your action would be willed a universal law. Great. 
so then I can say, well, what if it turns out that sacrificing your child in a devotional act in a particular circumstance is uh, in accord with the Kantian categorical imperative to always act so that your action be will the universal law? Would you, in that circumstance, sacrifice your child? And you can go on through virtue ethics or situation ethics or different ethical frameworks or theories and posit the same per impossibile scenario. It's not anything to do per se with divine command theories of ethics. And so that would be my Tukokwe response is to say, well, first of all, first part, again, I don't think God would command that. But if you want to say, well, yeah, but what if he did? I'll just say you can play that game for any ethical scenario and say, what if relative to your scenario, it was the morally obligatory thing to do, would you then do it? And I hope that you can see we are indeed all in that same boat.